Есть цель Азимут 152, дальность 15, высота 2. Есть цель по первому, по первому пуску разрешен. По первому пуску. Пуск. Panzer, or Greyhound, missile system is Russia's latest guardian of the skies. This cutting-edge air defense marvel combines precision firepower with lightning-quick reaction times. Its mission is to protect the skies from all aerial threats, from enemy jets to cunning, near-undetectable drones. With dual-threat capabilities that include surface-to-air missiles and rapid-firing cannons, the Panzer is a relentless sentinel, ever vigilant in the face of danger. Greyhounds can simultaneously engage two targets at once in a radius of around 30 kilometers, and tanks with a robust 8x8 truck chassis can be easily redeployed on the battlefield to support ground troops and essential facilities such as silos and communication sites. The skies of Russia have a new defender, and its name is Pantsir. The Pantsir S-1, translated to shell or armor, is one of Russia's later air defense systems. Also known as the SA-22 Greyhound by NATO forces, it's a combined short to medium range surface to air missile and anti-aircraft artillery system. Development of the Greyhound began in 1989 by the Russian defense company KPB Instrument Design Bureau as a replacement for the 2K-22 Tunguska air defense system. The aim was to develop an effective air defense system that could provide superior protection against missiles, airfields, and communication arrays. Nevertheless, when the USSR collapsed, the Pantsir was redefined as a short-range defense system to support ground troops and more powerful air defense systems such as the S-300, S-400, and S-500. The weapon system was formally introduced in 2003 to the Russian Armed Forces and incorporates long-range and close-range defense capabilities in the form of anti-aircraft guns and missiles to intercept aircraft, precision-guided munitions, and unmanned aerial vehicles. The system features a combination of 12 surface-to-air missiles and two 30mm anti-aircraft cannons, but can differ according to the variant. The Greyhound also includes radar and targeting systems to track and engage multiple targets simultaneously. The Pantsir is mounted on a 10-ton Ural 53234 8x8 truck chassis with single-tire wheels. The air-cooled diesel Ural 74510 engine provides 290 horsepower. The SA-22 Greyhound's missiles have a bi-caliber body with a separate booster, sustainer, and separation mechanism. The missile weighs over 65 kilograms, 16 of which belong to the warhead. The surface-to-air missiles have a range between 1 to 12 kilometers, a speed of around 1,300 meters per second, and a flight altitude of 15 kilometers. The 30-millimeter guns have a range of 4 kilometers and carry 750 rounds of ammunition, including tracer, high explosive, and armor-piercing rounds. The crew of three can adjust the maximum fire rate up to 700 rounds a minute as needed. The Pantsir S-1 fire control system comprises a dual waveband tracking radar and a target acquisition radar. The detection range is around 30 kilometers. The Greyhound also features an electro-optic channel with a long-wave thermal imager and infrared direction finder for automatic target tracking of two simultaneous objectives. 
in addition to the basic variant, there's the Pontier M, explicitly modified for naval use, and the Pontier SM, tailored to make the system more effective against drones of all shapes and sizes. Russia has deployed and exported the SA-22 Greyhound to the Middle East, Africa, Asia, and South America. The system was first deployed in 2013 to support Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad in the Syrian civil war. The number of Pontsiers increased in 2015 when Russian troops formally entered Syria to back up the regime. Pontsiers also found their way to Crimea in 2014 when the Wagner PMC and Russian-backed separatists operating in Donbas proclaimed independence from Ukraine. Other Greyhounds were also delivered to the troops of Khalifa Haftar and the Libyan National Army, supported by Russia. During these operations, the Greyhounds were particularly exposed to attacks from drones and airstrikes from Israeli forces, leading Russia to further upgrade the system against these new threats. Since then, the different variants of the Greyhound have been deployed with mixed success to the front lines, often getting destroyed by kamikaze drones, particularly those made by Israel and Turkey. In June 2019, the United Arab Emirates deployed several Pansir S-1s in Libya to support the Libyan National Army. One of them was destroyed by an airstrike on the advance towards Libya. During the summer of 2020, the United States military conducted an incredible and secretive operation to get its hands on one of Russia's Pansir S-1 surface-to-air missile systems. According to an article from the Times, the mission took place in Libya in June 2020. The SA-22 Greyhound in question had been one of the several systems purchased by the United Arab Emirates and given to the Libyan government. After being captured by the local militia, the Pansir was recaptured by the government troops and transferred to a base with Turkish army personnel. Shortly afterward, the system was shipped to Zawara Air Base, where a U.S. Air Force C-17 Globemaster III picked up the truck-mounted system. It was then flown to Rammstein Air Base in Germany before making its way to the U.S. for immediate inspection by the intelligence community. The SA-22 Greyhounds that remained operational in Libya were countered by electronic warfare systems that jammed the system's radar and coordinated airstrikes. The next large-scale deployment of the SA-22 Greyhound came with the outbreak of the Russo-Ukrainian War in February 2022. Some of them were destroyed by Ukrainian troops after getting stuck in the mud of the front lines, leading to the loss of at least 20 systems since the first firefights between both militaries. According to Russia's state-owned defense corporation, Rostec, the Pansiers deployed have been used effectively against Ukrainian missiles, drones, and aircraft. Nevertheless, such affirmations have been called into question based on the incursions of Ukrainian drones in Russian-occupied territory, especially Moscow. Russia has been forced to adopt the necessary air countermeasures against increasing drone attacks conducted by the Ukrainian army since early 2023. According to data from the BBC, more than 190 drone strikes have been conducted within Russian territory since January. From cities to military bases, the Kremlin appears to be growing desperate after the drone strikes against Moscow and, most recently, the strikes against multiple air bases close to the Ukrainian frontier and other NATO partners. This led the Russian military to adopt a defensive system inspired by Hitler's Third Reich during World War II. The government-owned television channel Russia 24 has recently released footage of Pantsir systems deployed on the roofs of anti-aircraft towers, reminiscent of Wehrmacht Flakturms. Also known as Flak Towers, these were large, above-ground-level anti-aircraft gun towers built across the most important cities of the shrinking Third Reich to provide anti-aircraft fire against Allied bombing raids. The concrete walls of these imposing, medieval-like anti-aircraft towers were up to three and a half meters thick and could sustain the direct hits of even 203mm M1931 howitzers. The unique construction of these towers allowed a sustained fire rate of over 8,000 rounds a minute from the multi-level guns that comprise the Flakturm. The Luftwaffe also envisioned them as air raid shelters against the relentless bombing runs of the enemy. According to the details shown by Russia 24, the flak towers employing Pantsir systems are only being built and installed in the areas surrounding Moscow. It is not clear yet if the military will build more in other cities, or if they will reach a level of development comparable to that of Flakturms. 
This level of defense can be interpreted as a real concern of the Russian armed forces regarding Ukraine's capability to strike the capital with impunity.